it can be a lot to understand, so do bear with me. Obviously, it's a little bit more easier for me to understand because I deal with it on a daily basis. But for someone who's learning the illness and who might have been newly diagnosed with this illness, it can be a little confusing. So just stay with me. I will put some more information down in the down bar below. That way you can do your own research. In this video, we're going to be talking about what specific strand causes these issues. And then we're also just going to talk a little bit of the symptoms about it. I'm not going to talk about coping strategies and I'm not going to talk about testings or treatments. I do want everyone to be respectful in the comments because not just myself, but other people are going through this and are having a really rough time with dealing with it, especially since there's no cure, there's no treatment, and there's no specific way to cope when this happens. So today we're going to be talking about Lyme neuroborreliosis. It comes from a specific strand, which is mainly known in North America, but it can be in many other different countries. It comes from the bacteria Borrelia burgdorferi. It can also come in several different strands, which I'll put down below. Normally when you get Lyme disease, it starts in certain stages, and I have a video where I talked about all the stages of Lyme disease. There's an early stage, there's a mid stage, and then there's a late stage. In the mid stage to late stage, you normally start to develop these neurological issues. And a lot of people ask what what time frame is that late stage? It's anywhere from three to six months that is considered having a late stage of Lyme disease. Supposedly they say if you're past that specific time period, it causes the illness to start to affect your nervous system. So when you first get Lyme disease, it starts off with flu-like symptoms. And again, um, flu-like symptoms like coughing, fever, sneezes, you might develop a rash. As it continues to develop and spirochete inside of your body, that's where it starts to go from mid-range to late stage of Lyme disease. So that means you might start to feel or have meningitis, painful radiculitis, which I don't know if I stated that right, but it can start to develop into that. It, then it can also progress even more to cranial neuritis. Those all sound very, very in depth. Again, I do advise you to do your own research. A way to dumb this down is you are just highly inflamed in the nervous system, which means your brain, your spinal cord, anything that's touching your nervous system, it's inflamed. With this not being treated, not being known, and most of the time people getting diagnosed at a late stage, this starts to progress and it starts to get worse. A lot of doctors will tell you that, oh, that's, it's, it's reversible, it'll just take some time for you to get back to your normal self. But the illness slowly chips away and eats your nervous system. So a lot of those things that you are planning to get back, you most likely won't get those back. I know a lot of people, I, I call them Lyme haters because they are so advocate that Lyme disease is not a real thing or that it's controversial or that it's just, um, it's easy to cure. Those who have these combination issues with the ones that we just spoke about, for some, like me, it might progress you to have a thing called peripheral neuropathy, which, um, again, is attacking your nervous system, causes you to have pins and needles, tingling sensations in your back, which I did explain in one of my videos about having tingling sensations going up and down my back, Be cold hands, cold feet, um, just always feeling cold all the time. It can cause you to have hormonal issues. It could cause your thyroid to go out of whack. Once it starts attacking your nervous system, it can develop into more serious concerns. I did come up with a list of some of the things that not only affect me, but also are shown in research what can also affect other people who have this specific issue with having neuro Lyme disease. It can cause major psychiatric disorders, such as Poor attention span, hypersensitivity, which can involve lights, sensitivity, sound sensitivity. It also can cause dispersonalization, which I did talk about a video about it. Um, I didn't realize that this had to, had to affect your nervous system, but it can cause you to have dispersonalization issues. Musical hallucinations, where you can hear certain sounds that are ringing, like you might think that your phone's ringing repetitiously and it's not. What? What? Why won't you stop? Do it. Say it. Ten things. Um, 
can cause mood swings, impulsivities, intrusive images and thoughts, which is, could also be known as OCD. I'm not trying to say that I'm, I have OCD and I've been diagnosed with OCD. I'm just saying that it can make you seem like you're OCD. Does that make sense? It's more than just your normal brain fog. It's, it's very, very different. You can't find the words to speak. You can't explain what's going on. Sometimes I'm completely zoned out and I cannot function. It's not something to take lightly. It's a very, very serious condition and it can cause major anxiety. It can cause panic attacks. It can cause extreme depression. A lot of doctors are now finding that if Lyme disease is caught at a late stage, it can cause severe depression. Lyme disease has been shown to cause paranoia, bipolar disorder, panic attacks, and major depression. One of the number one reasons why people die from Lyme disease is not only due to the illness itself attacking your system, but also due to the mental faculties. A lot of people commit suicide because it's too much to handle. It's not something to take lightly. It's a very, very serious condition and it's just about figuring out what helps you as an individual. I'm glad that I was able to get this off my chest because so many people look at me and um, when talking to me, um, I'll lose words and I'll say um a lot and what's the word for that and etc. And it seems normal, but in reality, it's like losing a thought and it never coming back. In a way, you feel like you're never making sense. It's very difficult to express this and I've been always very nervous talking about this specific topic because I don't want to sound crazy. No matter what the CDC says or no matter what a doctor's office says, like Lyme disease is very disabling. Um, so please respect those who have this illness. Please respect those who can't fully explain what's going on with them and just be more respectful. That's all I gotta say. So I hope this was a little bit informative. Again, I'm really sorry if you are having these issues. I know that it's not fun and I'm fighting with you 100% to the end. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.